All right, Shalom. See here, Salaki. All right, Shalom. Give it all praise to the Most High, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem Rakhadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders. Great millstone for teaching his truth is all gone all around the earth. Shalom to the hopeful elect out there. And we are back at it once again. As we as is customary for us to, to do the work of the Lord day in and day out, week after week. Alright. Here to bring it out, right? We got three things. As the Hebrew Israelites so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native and Seminole Indians who are scattered all across the world. You are the true children of the Most High, okay? One, we're here to tell you and to teach you that you must repent or else you will be destroyed in the coming destruction, right? Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Bible. And also to tell you other wicked nations and in particular, at the top of the charts, Esau, Edom, so-called white man, you are going into slavery when our kingdom comes, when our Lord shows up. For a thousand years, you will serve hardcore bondage, worse than what you did to the children of Israel, and then you will be totally annihilated after a thousand years, okay? All right? And the third thing is to tell you about the destruction, okay, by nuclear fire that's gonna to happen to this place, Babylon the Great, okay, and nuclear fire, nuclear weapons that will hit even other parts of the earth, you see? So now first let me get, because we are in this time where it's a beautiful time for us who believe Okay. And for those who are still in the world, you think that this is a beautiful time for going out and continuing on in your wickedness. But the Lord has sent his men to preach the gospel of our Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay? And to you, it is not wise. Okay? But the Lord has taken this thing that you call foolish and giving it to some wise men, all right? So I'm gonna read 1 Corinthians, and we'll jump in right there, verse 17, and it reads, for Hamashiach sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. What gospel? This good news, this word, right? About Yahweh Shai, about being our redeemer, all right? About the remnant returning, Okay? And the destruction of all our enemies, man, who are first and foremost the enemies of the Most High and His Son. Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father, by Hashem in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. You see? So we're going to verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of the Most High. You see that? I'll read that again, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. You see? And if you refuse to repent and you stay in this wicked world, guess what? You are going to perish, okay? But unto us, who's the us? The remnant, those that return, those that put their faith in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, okay? That's the us, those who have received this gospel, woken up to this gospel through the, through what? The foolishness of preaching, right? The men of the truth, the true leaders of Israel, the apostles of Great Millstone, who have been laboring in this work, okay, for decades, sloppy, and learn from their elders, okay, Maybe they didn't see much fruit 35 years ago, 
But now look at the fruit all over the world of brothers waking up everywhere, preaching this gospel, because that's what it's about, this gospel, you see? Going back to verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of the Most High. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent, right? Yeah, all your so-called archaeologists, anthropologists, okay, sociologists, all your so-called judges and attorneys, okay, Congress and representatives and statesmen, councilmen, they think themselves to be wise. If they were really wise, why in the fuck is this place in the condition that it's in? You see, they're not wise. Verse 19 again, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Right, the Lord destroyed the wisdom, okay? We read in other places that wisdom of teeming, you know, the so-called brilliant uh, uh, branch of Esau's tree, right? Them Germans, you know, East Germans, okay who have that mind the lord put that spirit on them to have that mind to create all these wicked devices all right who tell you about evolution okay and just totally omit or cut out the true creator they're not wise for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not the Most High made foolish the wisdom of this world? Right. Anytime you tell two men, say that two men can get married, how is that going to produce any fruit? If two women sit there and bump uglies, how is that going to produce fruit? The Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not the Most High made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. It pleased power by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Lord willing, those of us who are doing our best to do the will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh in whatever capacity you're in, whether you're a teacher or a preacher or you, whatever it is, you, 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 you support the ministries, okay? You give to brothers, you do for brothers, whatever the case may be, whatever capacity the Lord has got you working in, we pray that we're saved, right? When we reach the end, that the Lord will count us worthy, okay? So anyway, that's that, that's the opening, okay? This foolishness of preaching, you see? Because without this preaching, Without men out there, without YouTube videos, right? Without men putting in the work, though it was already predestined that we would wake up, how would we wake up had not the Lord put these men in the earth to do exactly what they're doing? Okay? That's how I really heard the word and came into the truth, by, by video, right? So let me, uh, let's get to the crux of the matter here. Because if you're not awake, right, and you're listening to this and you're not fully convinced, listen further. This place is going to be blown away. Okay, it's going to burn with fire. 
the Most High is going to destroy this place. All right? Meaning that this whole world of Esau's is going bye-bye. Okay? And you who are listening out there, if you have not repented, you better make haste, okay? Or else you will get caught up in the destruction, okay? Particularly talking to you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are stretched all across the planet. But the bulk of us are here in the Western Hemisphere in Babylon the Great, in the, in the Americas, North, Central, and South, okay? including all the islands, the Caribbean Sea, okay, the Caribbean Islands, you're Israelites. It's like you. This is because our people are wicked, man, and they refuse to repent. And you're down here in all these different places and you're worshiping false gods. Okay? And the Lord is going to destroy you for it if you don't repent. This is 2nd Ezra 1, and I jump in at verse 5. And it reads Go thy way and show my people their sinful deeds and their children their wickedness, which they have done against me, that they may tell their children's children because the sins of their fathers are increased in them. For they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange gods. Yeah, fake false Jesus, Buddha, Allah, Santa Maria, right, voodoo, Egyptology, what else? You name it, okay? Because the sins of their fathers are increased in them, for they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange gods. Am not I even he that brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage? But they have provoked me unto wrath and despised my counsel. Right. When the Lord got angry with us, he put us in multiple captivities, right, to teach us a lesson. And Jake's still going off. Verse 8, pull thou off then the hair of thy head and cast all evil upon them, for they have not been obedient unto my law, but it is a rebellious people. See, that's our people. You know, we say it, you know, in tongue in cheek and vernacular, it's a man, dude, hard headed. Well, that's our people. See? Verse 9, how long shall I be, uh, forbear them into whom I have done so much good? Right, the Lord has done so much for us, delivering us from all these different captivities and running off all our enemies. Here, yeah, verse 10, many kings have I destroyed for their sakes. Pharaoh and his servants and all his power have I smitten down. All the nations have I destroyed before them, and in the east I have scattered the people of two providences, even of Tyrus and Zidon, and have slain all their enemies. See, the Lord had given us so many different benefits and have watched over us, okay? And our people won't consider the Lord. And so you go on your way to all these other fake gods you believe in all this philosophy and all this other shit Babylon the Great has to offer you, okay? Which is death. That's what it's offering you. Have a good time for this little period right here, uh, doing wickedness, because it's fun, right? Because it's pleasing to the flesh, and forget about God. That's what they tell you, all right? This is a... Uh, 2nd Ezra 9 uh, and I just jump in at verse uh, 9 okay because this this is going to lead to that destruction um, I'm 
Matter of fact, Slocky, let me uh, let me go up. Let me go up to. I would start at one. Let me see here. I just started one. This is scripture that always comes out. Second Ezra chapter nine verse one, <clears throat> and it reads. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and an end is manifest, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. And everyone that shall be saved, right? Because that's ultimately our goal, is to be saved from this place, right? To not be caught up in the destruction. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. That's why we do the work. Right? And by faith, right? Gotta have faith and works like the Apostle Paul said. Okay? That's how you know this Apocrypha is, is, is part of the scriptures. Okay? And by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Right? That remnant. And we're praying, Lord's will, that we are a part of that remnant. Okay? For such as in their life have received benefits, Salakia. Um, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Right. What are his ways? These laws, these statutes, these commandments. Right? that we're supposed to hold on to. Never mind what the Christian church told you, the Baptist church told you, okay? Never, never mind what the Lutheran church told you, Pentecostal church told you, that the law was done away with, you saved by grace, grace only, right? Sure, we have grace, but you're still supposed to perform as best you can, all right? And we go into that all the time. All right, go back to uh, verse nine. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Right, there's many, many of people from the past and in the present who have benefited from the Lord without even knowing the Lord. Right, have prospered greatly in the earth without giving the Lord as much as a thanks. Okay? And they that have loathed my law, which you hated the laws of the Lord, right? You hate the ways of the Lord, right? Because it gives you guidelines that you can't come out here and live like a beast. So you hate it. You loathe it. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, and that's now, right? And has been ever since Yahweh Shai was on the earth, right? 2,000 years. People have had the opportunity to repent. Okay? When as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. And what's, what's going to be that pain, right? What's that pain? And that's what we're speaking of. You want to try to avoid that death by that pain, okay? That pain of, of destruction, that pain of fire. You see? Now let's go over to, uh, because the Lord ain't playing around, man. Whole lot of Jake's boy gonna be tore up. Amos 9 and 1. Call Lord Yahweh Shimmy Yahweh Shine. Open right up to it. 
Um, let's see where we go in at. Yeah, let's go to, uh, let's just jump right in on verse 8. Okay, this is uh, Amos 9, jump in right there, verse 8. And it reads, Behold, the eyes of the Lord power are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Yeah, that sinful kingdom is really the Israelites in this time, but now we look at it today, and we know that we are in this wicked world, in this wicked kingdom run by wicked Esau, right? So this is a sinful, wicked place, okay? Um, we'll read verse 8 again. Behold, the eyes of the Lord power are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, said the Lord. Right, his remnant will the Lord save. And there's no, as far as we know today, in our minds, an exact number. We don't know what that is. It's in the millions. It could be the hundreds of millions. It could be billions. We don't know, right? But nonetheless, it's still a small number. It's a smaller number compared to the number of people that will be destroyed from our own nation. Okay? We ain't gonna count the other nations right now. We, I'm just speaking to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right? You speckled birds out there. Your hour to repent is almost up. Verse 9, For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. Now, how do you sift, right? Like when you sift in something, you use a strainer, a colander, uh, something that you pour, let's say, take for example, flour, and you pour it in a sifter and shake it. All right? Now, he says in all nations. Why in all nations? Because we're scattered in all nations. Right? Israel is scattered into all nations. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in the sea, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. But what? In verse 10, and all the sinners of my people, all the sinners of my people, right, of Israel, okay? We're the Lord's people. And two-thirds of you are sinners. That's two out of every three. If you just want to get down to a hard number. Okay? Verse 10. All the people, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Yeah, going on in your daily business, thinking that ain't nothing gonna happen to you. Okay? I go on to verse 11, and it reads, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. See? Going on to verse 12, that they may possess, what? The remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Okay. All right, we'll stop right there. I guess somebody done blew off their hand already. Okay. So destruction is coming. Let me see here. Let's see what else we can get. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, Proverbs one and verse twenty. Okay, because in that day, you you won't have an excuse. Okay, all excuses will be null and void. 
Proverbs 1 and 20 and it reads, Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her words saying, How long ye simple ones will ye love simplicity? Right. Those of you who hear these words, you see the prophets on the street, right? Out on the op out in the open, trying to teach you, trying to give you that call of repentance to come back, right? You scoff and you mock, but the voice of the Lord is out in the streets. It's out in the gates. It ain't in them haunted houses, in them places that you call church. That's not the voice of the Lord in there. The voice of the Lord is out here in the streets. Edomites riding by, enjoying their kingdom that's crumbling right before their eyes. Anyway, verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? Turn you at my reproof. Right. Turn. You hear this word or voice of correction, you're supposed to turn around. You're supposed to stop doing wickedness. Okay. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you, Salakia. I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Yeah, the Lord has constantly reached out to us, right? To tell you to repent, to tell you to come back, to tell you that he's your God, right? That he'll do whatever he, uh, 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 he needs to for you. He can do whatever it is you, you need, but you have to obey him, right? Didn't it say that in the scripture? Let me see. Maybe I'm thinking of another one. Yeah, where it talked about obeying the Lord, okay? It's not in this one. But uh, anyway, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to get this word and we're supposed to live by it, okay? But we know two thirds of our people ain't gonna do it. Therefore, you subject to destruction. Let's go over to, uh, and today I'm just using this phone, but I can actually, um, I just go to the book. Cause there's a glare on this phone now from the sun. Go to uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 25. No, Jeremiah 35. Verse 12. Jeremiah 35 and jump in at verse 12. Glasses keep wanting to fall down here. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah saying, thus said the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, the power of Israel. Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, will ye not receive instruction to hearken to my words, saith the Lord, Yahweh? See, are you not listening? Are you not going to hear my words? Go tell them that, Jeremiah. Why are they not listening to me? Verse 14, the words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandments. See, that's where I was going with the obey. See? Just obey the commandments to the best of your ability. Things that you can do and control, do them. Okay? So this is an example here Jeremiah is giving. Right? That he got from the Lord. But obey their father's commandment, notwithstanding I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking 
but ye hearken not unto me. I have sent also unto you all my servants the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given, which I have given to you and to your fathers, but ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. Because the sons of John, uh, Jonadab, the sons of Rechab, have performed the commandments of their father, which he commanded them, but this people have not hearkened unto me. See, hard-headed, stubborn, wicked, okay? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, power of hosts, the power of Israel, behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, right? So there you go, you squeamish Christians, you sit back and say, oh, the devil is always busy. The devil done done this or done that. Oh, that's evil. The devil, Satan was there. He did this and that. It just told you that the Heavenly Father, he said, I'm going to do all this evil that I said that I was going to do to you because you won't listen. See? Because you refused to hearken. And he rose up all his prophets back then and he's done it again in this day for the last 50 years. 50 years. It's like it. Or somewhere there's about. Okay? The prophets are back on the earth. Preaching as they always preached. It's like it. Ain't too many of us who are doing this work today ever thought that we would be doing I know I did. I never thought that I'd be doing this. See? I thought I was going to be a professional athlete in whatever sport I decided to do, you know, because I was good in all sports. I did everything. Boxed, ran track, and was, and I'm telling you, I was good in all of them. Boxed, ran track, played football, baseball, basketball. Okay? I'll beat you in a game of fucking jacks. You know? Pity pack, whatever. You know? <laughs> I was good at everything. <laughs> I'm just joking around. But no, you know, not many of us thought we would be doing this in this day and age, right? But it's coming back in the world. It's coming back around, see? Because this is what? This is it. This is the swan song. Lord willing, we make the chariots, okay? And not be destroyed because this is it. You know that song, Kenny Loggins? This is it. This is it. Oh boy. Uh, going back to verse 17, Jeremiah 35, 17. Uh, I'll finish it out. Because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard, and I have called unto them, but they have not answered. See? You too busy what? Turn it up. Too busy uh, indulging in all kinds of wickedness. Too busy wanting to race your little rice burning ass car. Right? You're too busy going around trying to commit adultery. You're too busy talking shit. That's our people. That's who the Lord is talking about in this book. Okay? Let's see what else we get. Let's go to... Uh, Let's 
go to Ezekiel. What did I want? Ezekiel 22. It's warming up out here. It's hot. This is Ezekiel 22. We'll jump in at verse 17. All right. And it reads, and the word of the Lord Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. You know, that dross is that tarnish, that, that nasty, like if you got silver, that nasty black covering that gets on your silver, and now you have to clean it, buff it, shine it. <sighs> See? That's what the house of Israel is like now. Okay. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, because ye are all become dross. Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Okay? And that's what's getting ready to happen. They don't have these nuclear weapons for nothing. Okay? The Lord gave them the spirit to build these things. And when the Lord does something as such as that, which is already prophesied here in the scriptures, then 10 times out of 10, they will be used, okay? And you Jakes, you're gonna be melted if you don't repent, okay? Let's go to, got some scriptures pulled up here. Um, because you know we, we look at that parable of the wheat and the chaff, right? You have the, the, the wheat and the tear, the sheep and the goat, and so on. Okay? But quickly, when we look at it, we know that there's something that's going to be gathered and saved, stored, and there's something that gets burned up because it's worthless. And there's no need for it. Right? So that's the parable that we see with John the Baptist when we read through the Gospels. Okay? So this is uh, Matthew 3. Let me see here. Uh, let me see, I'm gonna have to go up. I might have to start at the top. Yeah, I'll start at the top, why not? This is Matthew 3 and 1, and it reads, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. John was the precursor, or the, the, uh, the one that will announce the Holy One. That was his job. Right? Given to him by the Heavenly Father. Right? For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Esaias, which is Yahweh Shai, talking about who was spoken of in the book of Isaiah. Saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way for the Lord, make his path straight. Okay? And John the Baptist. And the same John, okay, because John the Baptist is mentioned as well, and the same John had his ra uh, raiment of camel hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and was baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. 
But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Right. So Jake being Jake, trying to get on board at the last second, okay, because they thought, well, if this guy's really the savior, we better, we better tighten up right now, okay? Bring forth therefore fruit, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham our fathers, for I say unto you that the Most High is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the ax is laid unto the root of the trees, Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, right? So, John is giving them that warning, okay? The Pharisees and the Sadducees, because these are the so-called holy people, the holy scribes, the ones who was leading Israel, had position and title and money, okay? But they was wicked as hell, okay? And now they're trying to act like they wanted to get right. You see? But he's letting them know, hey, every tree that doesn't bring forth good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. All right? I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost, or Spirit, and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire right unquenchable fire it's like okay so there is what's going to be kept and used right when you think of it in a natural sense as you gather wheat or whatever it is you gather Right? Just like the parable about the fish drawing out, throwing out a net, drawing, the, drawing that net in, and, and they put them in vessels. This one's good, this one's bad, this one's bad, this one's bad, this one's good. Right? It's the same thing. But they will be burned up. That's the destruction that's coming. Fire. See? Let's go on. We'll read it also in uh, Luke, I believe. Yeah, we'll read it in Luke. Luke uh, 3. This is Luke 3 and 12. Then came also publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely. Right? Sounds like what? Sounds like some commandments to me. Okay? And be content with your wages. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Hamashiach or not, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garden. But the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable, you see? So it's there in two different places, okay, of this same saying from John the Baptist to all those that gathered around him while he baptized, right? But particularly those officials, okay? Like it says here, I think it says publicans and, and officers, like maybe people of the army, Roman army, okay? People who have some kind of public status, all right? They could have been just officers of, of, of the church as well. But anyway, you get the point, okay? 
the giant was telling them, here comes the real deal. You better, you better straighten up. See? All right, let's go on to uh, Jeremiah. Fifty-one, and we start right there at the top. Matter of fact, I might just read just that verse. Jeremiah fifty-one and one. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh: Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, and that's this wicked place now, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. It's like it. That destroying wind is what nuclear destruction. That that wind was going to have so much energy, okay, that it's going to be able to melt things. You know, it's going to be able to uh, 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 knock over topple buildings. You know, it's going to be, as it says, a destroying wind, destructive, pure energy, heat, destroying everything in its path. All right. Let's go to uh, mm, Revelation 7. We start at verse 1. And it reads, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascended from the east, having the seal of the living power, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, Till we have sealed what the servants of our power in their foreheads, right? Giving these the remnant, these uh, uh, men, okay, as it goes on into the 144,000 that seal the, the Holy Spirit, right? The seed, the trees can also be likened unto the people, okay? The sea of, like, as they use the term, sea of people, you know. Um, so all these different in all these different nations, you know, the hundred and forty-four thousand, and not all of them, I would say, is on the earth today. You know, there's some that are in the spirit realm, more than likely, right? But there's a good number here on the earth during this time, okay? But scattered all over, okay? But that wind is what I was getting at, really, to go into that destroying wind, but the angels are holding it back now, okay? That destructive, destroying wind of the nuclear weapons. They haven't flown yet, right? For that day of destruction, okay? And I'll go on, I'll read a little bit more. Uh, verse uh, seven, I mean, slack it, verse uh, four. And I heard the number of them that were sealed which were sealed, Salakia, and there were sealed in 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel, right? So those are the men that the angels were waiting to get sealed with the spirit, the prophets of the, of the Lord, right? For this last time to speak and call, make that call of repentance, okay? Hey. Hey. What's going on? Preaching the Bible. Huh? Okay. What, are you, what are you doing? Just riding around? You bet. Okay. You bet. All right. If I can eat something. Anyway. Um, 
let's go down to verse 9 okay and it reads after this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands see so there's going to be a great multitude that one third okay and in that one third is that 144,000 that we read prior to that scripture to that verse so you had the 144,000 and then the rest of the great multitude that will come out of this before the destruction okay before the destroying wind all right lord willing as we always say that we're part of that number okay All right, so let's uh, let's go on. Let's look at because, uh, as I said, we can't put no exact number on it. It just says a great multitude, but the scriptures tell us it's so many of us, like we like the sand of the sea, right? So let's look at. Uh, there are three different, because I did a search on it, word search. Uh, Isaiah 10 to 22, and it reads, For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The, the, the consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. Okay? So it's going to be a small number, although the number is huge that we don't know what that number is, but it's gonna be a huge number. But when you think about everybody on the, on the earth at the time when this thing happens, man, you know, we can't, we can't say what that number is. Not, not right now, okay? And then also the Apostle Paul, he goes into it in Romans 9 and 27, and he, and he references Isaiah 10 and 22. And he says, Osiris is also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. You see? So that's, that's what this gospel is about. It's calling that remnant, putting that call out for the remnant to hear it. Okay? And for them to be activated through the Holy Spirit. Okay? All right, uh, Revelation 20 and eight, and it reads, well, let me go to it, it's a lock here. Starting at uh, verse seven, this is Revelation 20 and seven. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. So that tells you that these devils, when they got back into power, they went out and deceived what? The whole world, the whole earth, with their lies and their bullshit, their murder, their bloodshed. Okay? Um, verse 8 again and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom as the sand of the sea right those are the people in this uh, valley of Jehoshaphat a war to end all wars alright which we see brewing on the horizon right now Right, which is prophecy. We're reading it right now. Uh, verse 9 And they went up on the breadth of the earth and could pass the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from the Most High out of heaven and devoured them. 
and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Right. So the wickedness of the false church, right? The wickedness of Esau, Edom, the white man in his world are going to be cast down by that fire and brimstone. The Lord is going to burn this place up, okay? And with it, this wicked kingdom. All right? Let me see what else can we get. I think pretty much that's it. Let me see how much time we got here. Maybe we get a little bit more. All right. So anyway, we're looking at that. And you, you, as you hear, you know, fucking nosy ass Esau got to know what's going on. You know, riding around and it just, it just bothered him that I'm doing this. Right. What are you doing? They always want to know what everybody else is doing. What the fuck you doing? Going somewhere creating evil? What are you doing? Just riding around starting shit? You know? But that's the devil for you. It was three of them. One, one woman and two guys. So anyway, to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as I said from the top, you running out of time, okay? And this is what you gotta do. Let's go over to uh, Acts. Let's go to Acts 20, 3, and we'll jump in at verse 11. And it reads, and as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, okay? Because undoubtedly there'll be somebody that may watch this. Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe the message is getting through now. Are you reading a lot of scriptures from the Old Testament? Okay. The New Testament is referring to the Old Testament. Right? As Paul wrote his letters and Peter and all the uh, apostles were doing their work, they had not wrote this, this down. Like, writing the book of Acts like they were reading the book of Acts. No, everything that they referred to was coming out of the Old Testament, out of the scrolls, out of the scriptures, out of the prophets, right? That's why it says, for it is written. Anywhere in the scriptures that you're reading in the New Testament, and it says, for it is written, where is it written at? It's written in the Old Testament, in the, in, in the scrolls. That's what they're referring to. I mean, it's simple. It's real easy. They had not wrote, this had not been the New Testament gospel yet. It was, they were living it, going through it, and it becomes that. But at their time of living, they were referring to the scriptures. Okay? I don't know of any other way to try to make it any plainer. You know, because... Jake and the Christian church love that. You know, oh, you just keep reading stuff from the Old Testament. Well, that's that's what the apostles did. That's what Yahweh Shai did. He referred to the scriptures. Was he not in the synagogues te uh, teaching? Was he not reading from the book of Isaiah? What, what, what are they talking about? Okay, let's go on. Verse 12 again. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though 
by our own power or holiness, we had made this man to walk. Right, we didn't do it ourselves. Why are you, why is, why is this puzzling to you? Okay, the power of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, there you have it, right there, right? New Testament, Book of Acts, mentioning Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How do you mess that up? How do you not get it? Because you're blinded by the Most High, that's how. The power of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob the power of our fathers. Now whose fathers are these? The Israelites. Hath glorified his son, Yahweh Shai, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life, whom the Most High had raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name have made this man strong right it is the faith that that man had in your shine okay he believed the gospel and had faith the spirit was on peter and the apostles and the man believed and regained strength in his legs okay and this man through faith in his name had made his this man strong whom ye see and knew right you knew this man was this ain't no trick like they do in uh what was that damn uh, movie with uh steve martin uh where he played old corrupt ass preacher uh revival going to them revivals healing people see But the apostle tells him, say, you knew this man was crippled. You knew he couldn't walk all these years. And now you see him. How? Because of his faith. His faith on this man, Yahweh Shai. Okay? And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all and now brethren see talking to the Israelites and now brethren I would that through ignorance ye did it as did also your rulers but those things which the most high before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Hamashiach should suffer he has so fulfilled repent ye therefore and what be converted and that's what you have to do. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You gotta repent and you gotta be converted. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, which before was preached unto you. Yeah, so they knew because the Lord was preached to, the, to, uh, to these people. And they marveling at this man who can walk now, but they knew about Yahweh Shah. Okay? Verse 21, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which the Most High has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your power raise up unto you of your brethren right coming out of the tribe of judah like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people yea and all the prophets from samuel and those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which the most high made with our fathers saying unto Abraham and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed unto you first the most high having raised up his son 
Yahweh Shai, sent him to bless you and turning away everyone of Salaki and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Right. So he explained the whole purpose of Yahweh Shai to these people who had heard him from the beginning. You see? So there was no need for you to marvel that this man had re received strength in his legs. Okay, because you knew that this man was the prophet, uh, was the Salaki, was the son of the Most High through all the prophets. See? So, anyway, that'll pretty much do it, okay? As always, it's always a great thing to come out and give glory unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and read the scriptures and, you know, post these lessons and camps and what have you and hope that you may be edified, right? But the main thing you need to get out of this is repent because the end of the world is at hand, okay? You Negroes, you Latinos, you Native Americans, you better repent before that door closes. That door of mercy is closing, okay? We say it week in and week out, week in and week out, but as some of the scriptures say, paraphrasing, the Lord is long suffering to us world, all right? That's in, uh, I believe, the first book of Peter, chapter three. I could be wrong on that, but somewhere thereabouts, okay? All right, the Lord is long suffering to us world, all right, giving us the opportunity to hear the word, to meditate on it, right? For it to prick your mind, your heart, Okay, and to get you activated and understand that you are, you know, and we are the children of the most high power, right? Through our Savior, Yahweh Shai, the one and only begotten Son of the Most High. Okay? So with that I'm gonna give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders, great millstone. Shalom to the hopeful elect out there. I'll see you all again real soon, all right, with another lesson or another camp, all right? So I'll see you all real soon. Shalom.